is Damo's recovery session. I love it, Purple. Good to see you on a Monday always. Hello, Jim and Bill. There's a heap going on today, isn't there, on uh, on all sorts of fronts. Well, I want to... Now, we start with the negatives, and um, we're going to get to them in just a sec. But while we're talking negatives, I'm very worried about the standard of broadcasting on this station. (laughs) No, look, there are three examples of people that quite clearly shouldn't be on the air. Well, one's got small teeth. One's a very good friend of yours, and one's been a a known recidivist in this space. I I just want... Well, let's put the three of them up, and I want... Want you to judge who has got the most to worry about. Let's have a listen to Nate Brown uh, earlier uh, end of last week. As to everybody helped us out, put this to get out to the end of the art. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to finish off with that. <laughs> <laughs> Triple M rocks footy. <laughs> what, what, what is that? What is that? So that is a man who's had a brain fade yep. and needs to be rebooted. Yeah. Well, while we're talking brain fades, <laughs> of course, the famous yes. one from our man years ago with the great Spud Frawley. Uh, very good, boys. Got any Willis? <laughs> so, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, I didn't I, say that. I, I don't get any of that. And then, of course, my best mate, Greg Blewett, <laughs> yeah. who's doing a great job over there in Adelaide, but down on the boundary. Greg Blewett on the boundary for Bob Jane team arts. Clean belly, heel, bill of health. <laughs> uh, clean bill of health for both teams down here, guys. What are we doing? Tim. <laughs> Greg Blewett, as a result what? of Nathan Brown's brain meltdown on Friday night, is the happiest person in the oh Triple M camp God. right now. Because he's not the only problem. Where are we at, Jim? <laughs> I'll tell you, we're all associated with you. <laughs> so it might be you. It might be you, How Jimmy Boyle. to blame? It's a fair point, Bill. It's a fair point. I am concerned. <laughs> I'm concerned. <laughs> you've mentored <laughs> oh. certainly Bluey, and, and I, I think yeah. you've had a very close relationship media-wise with Nathan Brown. I've and given obviously up, you work with Fat. I've given up on Fat. Yeah. I thought the other two were better than that, to be honest, but they're clearly not. Now, let's get serious. Uh, we are in the middle of a COVID crossfire. So yeah. what are we doing with this competition? Yeah, and, and to use all those cliches, it, it's closing in, isn't it? Um, the uh, evidence of that was uh, was in the final hour before the, the last game of round 18, mm-hmm. GWS and, um, and, the, and the Sydney Long Swans stuff. team. So two key players came out, one for each team in Callum Mills and Toby Green and others, Bill. And look, just to get a sense of drama, I don't think people have fully caught up with how this played out yesterday. One of the players who came in was James Rowbottom from the, the Swans. And just to, just to let people into his world yesterday. This is how he reflected upon being called up to play the game of footy when he was happily uh, doing his own thing in a hotel room. Uh, I was in the shower just at the hotel about hour and hour ten before the game um, and Berber rang and said, get your gear on it's been a shit show down here, might be playing and I <laughs> j- jumped out of the shower, got dressed um, a girlfriend came upstairs about two or three minutes later and she said what are you doing? Aren't we leaving like an hour? And I said uh, no, I think I'm playing and then Blades out the front, came down in about half an hour, we're in. So extraordinary scenes where, where the exposure to the COVID situation in Victoria, where they attended the rugby union yep. match on the Tuesday night of last week, before Victoria was in lockdown, and before we'd even had, a, I think, a semblance of, of what, the, what it means to be a tier one, tier two, tier three, under this Delta variant mm. approach that the uh, health mm. authorities are having, uh, had to then obviously stand aside from the, the game yesterday. So Purple, let me ask you this, what's the point of getting tested? If you get tested and you're negative, and it yep. doesn't matter anyway. That's how it would be, the way I, I see it, Jim, be treated in Victoria. Given there were special exemptions given to these players and officials to go into Queensland, they are approaching it in a different way. And as such, there's a, as we speak, a, a work backwards from a 14-day quarantine period. Now, there will be submissions made on behalf of each individual here. I believe that start time will go back to the actual exposure time, which was Tuesday last week. So there may only be one more game required to be missed for these people who missed already yesterday but but again even that is in abeyance as we speak so what if they can fly into melbourne and play would they then be available i, I would doubt i would doubt they'd be able to do any sort of movement while they're under this quarantine period at the moment so it so makes no sense to me because you get tested the test come back negative surely at that point you're like okay you're free to go yeah. it, it just makes no sense that you're then locked down for another 13 days beyond a, a negative test don't want to get too caught up in the minutiae in in that i don't 
totally claim to know what's going on, Jim. But, no, but the Delta either. variant is is one that they're treating very differently to what has happened previously. And as such, the protocols that are in place for the public and obviously by an extended nature when it comes to footballers playing football in another state. So, look, and the, the worry is what happens again? I mean, we've already had a situation this morning where um, Josh Dunkley is now in yeah. the same boat for a exposure yes. bill to, to another site. So you just wonder how many, how many more incidents of this type can happen before or there is something by way of a, a pause port. But as we speak again, and things can change, but as we speak, the intent is to get these games played right through until the end of the year without stop. Yes, indeed. What, five home and away yeah. rounds to go? So 45 games, Damo. We've just got to tick them off, don't we? That's hey, it, I'll tell you what is interesting. The late changes, there's a new uh, late change, isolating. It's unbelievable. No. When yeah. You, the, yeah, you know, not injury or uh, whatever. Yeah. Isolating. Whoever would have thought of that. But no. yeah. it is, Damo. It's got down to it. It's not a day-by-day thing. It's an hour-by-hour thing now, it is. isn't it? It well, is. And look, check on to Triple M um, online platforms. The, the the round 19 fixture will be out at some stage. We're talking early, early-ish early Melbourne on, Western uh, Bulldogs moved to Saturday night, look, I'm hearing. Uh, pos- it's, it's a Saturday night, was it? Yep, yeah. That's the word okay. Yeah. Well, it's certainly going to be moved out around 20. Um, yep. Collingwood having to fly into Adelaide for the Port Adelaide game on Friday night. That requires special exemptions to under the fly and fly out of South Australia. So, yeah, but that's a round 20 game that Collingwood Western Bulldogs will be moved forward to round Uh, 19. Melbourne Western Bulldogs. Melbourne Western Bulldogs, sorry. Um, And other games will then be moved back into round 20. But as as it stands, what, what will happen? Each matchup that is still to be played, that game will take place. There won't be any alteration of the actual opponent for yes, each right. team. It's just when the matches right. will be played. We've got about three minutes to get the negatives done, yep. and, and we don't like to dwell on them. So uh, let's bang through a couple Geelong. Yeah. My God, they did the biggest number ever on Fremantle, Didn't who they? were as poor as any team's been this year for me. Yeah, well, three goals is all they got, and, and only one in the first mm. half, and that came from a deliberate out-of-bounds free mm. kick. Um, another goal came from a complete botch-up by three Geelong defenders who just didn't talk to each other, and the ball spilled loose to Michael Walters, and then they managed to sort of kick a nice goal, I think, themselves. But what three goals for, for the entire game. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're in a different... It was like a waffle team, wasn't it, it was, what they did? But they've been really good, Fat. Their last six weeks, I reckon Geelong... Uh, sorry, uh, Freya, I've really built into something that's sustainable but now you can get beaten by Geelong in the wet they're a bloody good side as we know but that was poor yeah it was look and I thought Freo were a chance because Geelong quick turnaround had to fly Mm. into Perth obviously but it was just professional they just got over there they got the points flew home so very professional I know one player who's going well for a Freo big Darcy isn't he having a year Sean Darcy yeah he was good he he franked his own form didn't he um, he just did. on that, they just don't put anyone above them, the Dockers, and I think that's the, their concern. That's their next step they're going to yep. take. I'll throw in Brisbane and Melbourne in the mm. same negative yeah. conversation in that um, Brisbane losing to, to Richmond, a second loss in a row, St Kilda the previous week. Yep. Melbourne adding Hawthorne. Now, they didn't lose, but they didn't win, so they drew. Uh, but they, you then add Hawthorne, which is, as we know, second last on the ladder to the other teams in Adelaide, Collingwood, and GWS, who are all down the ladder. And they're the, they're the teams they haven't been able to beat this year, the, the D. And so there's a concern there when oh, there's an attitudinal issue at play. No doubt. If, good thing in, they're not going to play finals against any of those teams because then they would be in a heap of strife. Angus Brayshaw has got to be better. you got a set shot, 35 out, not much angle. He, he, he kicks that, you win the game. Yeah. So you're leader of the club. I love him. He's my nephew, of course. Mm. You, you Fat, you drag a lot of air into yeah, your lungs like, and you go back and you kick it and the game's I, done. So uh, disappointing. Spot on. Mm. Yeah, it was a bit. But there was a couple other things. Even a couple of their senior players. Kind of panicked the game when they had to go to the boundary, or they, they they kicked the ball back into play, and they should have really won that one, Melbourne. Jeez, and, I like oh. the Hawks. I thought, oh, just having some issues with Fats. Uh, well, <laughs> it's either oh. him speaking, <laughs> or it might be the audio. Uh, we're not sure uh, can he which blame one. The, sp- the the audio for the previous audio you played, Jim. No. Where, no, <laughs> can he? Unfortunately, he's oh, live in the studio. Boys. Daniel Willis. <laughs> so, oh, well, uh, <laughs> so, so it might have been, it might have been a Zoom call, for all we know. All right, any other negatives quickly uh, before we... St Kilda missed a chance. Um, I'm not too yeah. critical of them, given they had a good three weeks prior to their loss to Port Adelaide, but yep. they missed the chance, and they missed it because of their own terrible kicking. We'll get to Port Adelaide mm-hmm. on the positive soon, but GWS, um, Jimmy Bartell, director of the club, sums them up pretty accurately and, and pretty often these days, that they're consistently inconsistent, yep. and, and they just missed. Mm-hmm. There's no excuse what happened pre-match COVID-wise because they were seven goals to one. And lost the game yep. of footy. Well, getting back to Port Adelaide and uh, St Kilda, uh, Fat, I think Duck said it 
best, or it might have been BT, one of the two of them, said, you could go and watch Lawn versus Apollo Bay, and it would be <laughs> yes. more entertaining it's than the cool. two hours. It, it, was, yeah. it was a very tough Actually, watch. Yeah. Jim. I think I think that was me. Uh, thanks to Seabus Special. Oh. <laughs> Jim, I love your audio. Is actually editing yourself while you're speaking. It's is good. It? All right, we need I'm to get to re- a break. I'm going to reboot. Reboot. Fat <laughs> positives coming up next. It's the Rush Hour Triple M. James Brayshaw, Billy Brownless. This is Triple M's Rush Hour. Bizarre Round 18 has been run and won in the AFL and Damian Barrett's in the studio. Oh, now we're getting positive, Purple. We like to be positive on a Monday, Jim, and uh, there's no uh, man who deserves more positivity out of the weekend in my eyes than Sammy Walsh from uh, the oh, Carlton yeah. Footy Club. You you Ooh. called the game yesterday for oh, Channel geez. 7 and uh, you're all over him. Um, he'd already had a very, very nice game to three-quarter time, mm. but they then hit that point and they're eight points down and he just takes his game to yet again a new level in terms of uh, impact on contest, impact on outcome. And the fact he kicked that goal too at a crucial stage in the last quarter, out of nowhere. Um, Another positive too was uh, Harry McKay, who'd who'd done effectively nothing Nothing. to that point. No goals at least, and then kicked four (laughs) in the final quarter. No, Purple, he had done nothing. He hadn't (laughs) recognised the Sharon to three-quarter time, so it was brilliant. Yeah, it was. And, And... you, you look at him, and, and obviously uh, with what Walsh is doing, Weidering's still having a very mm-hmm. nice season down back. There's always been a lot to work with. We just haven't seen it. But yep. three of the past four weeks now, it's been pretty good for, for Carlton. Again, they're, they're not yet there. But at the same time, David Teague, I've been as critical as anyone about his input into, and impact at that team. But right now, under review, he's probably coaching the best he's ever, ever coached, mm. at least in terms of getting the message through. And we've seen that story before. They get to three-quarter time, they're a chance, and they fall away. Well, yesterday they, they didn't. And okay, it was only against Collingwood, but it was still a meritorious win, Bill. It was, and well done to Jack uh, Silvani there and a nice tribute to his grandfather when he kicked that goal. Yeah, very good. I did like that. What about Sam Walsh's heat map? Right? <laughs> oh, Bill, I, I don't think we need to point to that. <laughs> what? I, I, well, I don't want to know if it's true or not. It's a, I don't know what's in the shape of. Well, I do. But oh, I, won't say <laughs> I don't know what it's in the shape of. <laughs> when have you ever talked about a heat map before, Bill? <laughs> Bill. On radio. Well, we can't well, let's show just, our I'll show you it. Oh, you show yeah. I'll show We're on radio, on and you're going to show us the heat map. It, no, it's, I'm going to get it on Zoom. It's um, basically a, a little fruity, the drawing of the heat map, and Bill thinks it's the funniest thing ever because That's he's basically a juvenile, <laughs> aren't you? Mentally, it's about twelve. I'm not sure it is. No, I think 12. he was playing over in uh, Fremantle at Cockburn, Jim. Oh no. Anyway, we move on from uh, Carlton, and they <laughs> yeah. are a worthy. Uh, positive. Who um, else? We'll get we're to Richmond. Uh, the, the 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 minus came out of obviously the the season ending kidney injury to Dusty Martin. But just on the footy side of it, to to do what they did against the Lions, having had a a torrid previous month, it was it was old school Richmond, wasn't it, Jim? The way they just yep. pushed that ball forward at the key times, and they've got a tough game against Geelong now. That game will stay at the MCG. It's Geelong's home game. It will not be moved to GMHBA. But after that, uh-huh. just quickly, Jim, uh, their matches go this way after Geelong, Fremantle, North Melbourne. GWS and Hawthorne, I'm giving them them those four games. Four. And that will be enough to, to make finals, and then it's game on again. But I'm giving them four yeah, out of the okay. remaining five. You reckon that'll be enough? Well, they're on eight wins now. Tw- Twelve says to me, historically, you get in on Even on the this 12. year where that eighth spot's really tight? Yeah, and I think the, the fact that he's tight um, actually lends itself to, to being a 12-win a guarantee and, and maybe even 11, even though right now it looks like you might need more than that. But look, that they, they were back to their old school desperation and, and just channel the ball forward. So there are seasons... Are even like, a dusty Martinless Richmond, do you think, can win? I think they can win five four of, of the last five. six. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah four, four of the last, well, five of the last six, including right. the, the Lions game. Yeah, well, I, if I do. they do that, they'll be worthy finalists. Yes, and then, then the conversation resets, doesn't it? What mm. can they do at that point? But yep. there's not one team that would want to play them, even without Dusty, I would think. So, uh, Port Adelaide, in, in the context of where they've been over under Ken Hinckley's era, there's been bigger wins. They've made prelim finals uh, twice. But I reckon if they can just make something of what they did on the weekend, the win against St Kilda was, was I feel, as good a home and away win as they've had for a long time anyway because of the the, the, the en masse injuries they've got. I mean, Gray being out for mm, a long time, yep. Motlop was out, Fantasia's been a good pickup, but hasn't been able to Butters. play. And then Butters, Dersma, who played in the Sandful Bill, and, and, and Rosie as well. That, that's Rosie. a lot of talent out. That's yep. a lot of talent yes. out. And 
He um, he didn't he wrap up uh, Ollie Wines on the Sunday Footy Show yesterday. Bill said he's um, he's found uh, who he is and 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 what he is, and yeah. I think that's a, a great little phrase to to apply to to Ollie Wines with how he's going about everything in 2021. And then you've also got uh, Ryan Burton, Jim, who has been mm-hmm. suffering niggling injuries pretty much his whole career, but but he again, according to Ken Hinkley, put together his best game of uh, football as a Port player. Carl Amon as well, fat. I love the way he rolls. Very yes. very good player. Kicks goals also, yep. Jim, but Georgie Artis, who was the other mm-hmm. one, he's, yeah. uh, he's only a young boy, but gee, he can play. He's going to kick a lot of goals. And Boyd, 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 Boyd. <laughs> Boyd, well, he had to go off for old Boyd, Boyd, Boyd Woodcock. He uh, corked his thigh. <laughs> he did. Old splinters, so he went off for a while. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what I yes. did love. Horse Longmire. Did you see that? A great win by Sydney. But he got emotional, the big oh, fella. Boy. He'd been away from family. The COVID cut. They lost three players. They were 35 points down, had a good win. He was actually emotional. Were there tears, Bill? I have heard about this, but I didn't see it myself. He, he was wiping away tears, oh. and Horse never does that. No. Oh, that's very unhorse like It's a character flaw, according to Sam Newman, isn't well, it? But it certainly <laughs> was with uh, Spud when he uh, – he's the Don Bradman of our games. No, I can't go on. Um, who um, else? No, it's just to, to Bill's point, the Swans, uh, yeah, to be coming, to be down one goal to seven uh, in the mm. second quarter of that game and to then regroup and, and Buddy hadn't done anything at, to that point, ended up with four and looked as good as, as at any stage if he's been, um, certainly in 2021, Papley kicking four as well. The old guys, I, I just love what Parker and Kennedy are doing this year mm. in, in, in just doing enough, but importantly allowing the kids beneath them to actually do Equally as much. And they've got a beautiful mix, their oh, yeah. right now. No, they're good. Uh, yeah. Jake Stringer doing yeah. exactly what you need to do when you're out of contract. <laughs> yeah, and, and what you need to do for a team that's still vying for the eight and finished round 18 in yes. the eight. So that being the Bombers, uh, another four goals. Crucial at the times mm. you want a player like that to be crucial in, Jim. Uh, late, that being. Uh, right, uh, he's having a good season for the Bombers too, isn't he? Um, two big, big two-meter two Peter. Meter. And, and Merritt and Parrish have put together very, very sound seasons to this point. They, they stood up. North was good again, but uh, ultimately the, yeah. the Bombers with more to play for ultimately and with more talent yeah. got the job done. Well, what I like about North Fat is uh, Taron Thomas is finally becoming what he's always had, extraordinary skill, but he's starting to put it together over two hours. Luke mm-hmm. Davies, Uniac, the same. And yes. uh, Jai Simkin is a proper footballer. Simkin. Do you think he's the next captain? I would have no doubt about that. No doubt. He, or he or Luke McDonald, either, either or, they'd both be good, but he is... He's a serious footballer, Joe Simkin. Yeah, Beautiful okay. mover. I love the way he uh, just kid, slices through uh, traffic. It was an important year for him, wasn't it, in, the, in that big picture perspective yep. to take the step. And you're, you're feeling he's taken the necessary oh, yeah, step. I, no, yeah. I reckon he's an absolute yeah. ripper. Okay. Uh, West Coast, I didn't see any of that. Is yeah. there anything <sighs> Look, yeah, coming out of that? Did what they had. A bit, bit like the Bulldogs against Gold Coast. Did what they had to do to get the job done just to stay uh, where they are in the eight. And, and that's sometimes that's all you've got to do, just get the job done. Kennedy being out didn't hurt them with Cripps kicking five and, and Ryan yeah. doing doing well too. But they got their goals through different means and that's not, not a bad thing given it was forced upon them with Kennedy not being there. I thought what Hawthorne did to Melbourne, just to talk about the positive out of that game from a Hawks perspective was uh, bring the ball in to their own 50 in a way that really unsettled Lever and May's operations yep. and any team playing Melbourne I think will study what Hawthorne did on that game and look some of it may have been inadvertent but at the same time it, it kept them out of the game and I think it's a it's a key takeout for other clubs and I just want to touch back on onto Geelong it's been for some time I, I just feel they're as well placed as any mm. club by, by a in fact better placed no than doubt. any club by some distance if they can get back uh, Cameron which they expect to get back very late in the home and Way, Bill. Uh, Gary Rowan, they'll probably yep. miss one, maybe two more. And then the curveball one is no. the Mitch Duncan. I just don't have a read on whether he's going to get back from what he's got. But it, And if he does, it might even be the first or second week of finals. But if they get all three back, look out. Mm. Look out. No, I'm yep. hearing it. Now, we've got Carlton fans who have, have, have tuned in 100% to this time of the day because they want to know, is the bus that's been parked there – for Ooh, best part of two and a half years, after that meritorious <laughs> win against their arch rival, is it going anywhere? Hit it, rabbits! It's a good point. Jim. It's, it's on blocks. That <laughs> you've bus. actually caught me off guard. It hasn't on this. got any wheels. You know what? It's been left there. That I'm long. leaving it there. Oh, oh, no, Damo. I'm leaving it there. No, Jeez. I just want to see it again. All right. So well, maybe ask me this time this next Monday. They got North this weekend, haven't they? So that's, um, that's a game they absolutely should win. They so, should win. So, they should all win. All right. You're gonna, if I'll, they I'll leave it North, there. <laughs> if they beat North, does it go? No. Oh! Because it's only North. <laughs>
time. Oh, Come that on, is Damon. harsh. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Naif Brown can finish off uh, our show because um, it's been, you know, well, not our show, our segment with Purple because we love him, of course. As to everybody who helped us out, put this to get out to the end of the art. Uh, how can I finish off with something? <laughs> Triple M rocks footy. Damo's recovery session. At this... tea to the end of the art. <laughs> <laughs> What's trending unusual coming up next on the Rush Hour? <laughs>